welcome to Champion Life Center Online. We are so happy to have you joining with us for our online celebration. But today, before we begin, I just wanted to take this moment and recognize those of you who have graduated. Now, this year it looks a little bit different, but we want you to know that as your family at Champion Life Center, we are so proud of all of your accomplishments and are celebrating this milestone alongside with you. You are truly champions for God and we are cheering you on as you continue to make an impact on this world. So congratulations to all of our graduates. If you wanna stay connected to your Champion Life family while you're at home, we would love for you to be a part of a life group. To register, you can find out more information online or register through our mobile app. And all of our Champion kids, we have Sunday School Online and it is so fun. You don't wanna miss it. Parents, you don't wanna miss this. You can find out more information on how to register your child on our website. And for all of our youth, for our Living Proof youth, we have Zoom Connects every Friday at 7.30. To register, you can contact Living Proof through their Instagram or Facebook. And right after service, as always, we have our Connect Lounge. We would love for you to be a part of it, connect with some of your CLC family. There's a link in the description up above and we can't wait to see you there. And right now it is offering time and we wanna thank you for continuing to obey God's principles to give and support us at Champion Life Center in the mission to share the good news of the gospel. So here are the ways that you can give online right now. You can text to give, give through our website, give through our mobile app, and you can e-transfer. Just visit our website at championlife.ca for more instructions. Please make sure to select the location of the center you are giving to. Thank you for your continued prayer and support of our ministry. And now would you join with us as we lift up the name of Jesus and worship him together. Hi champions and welcome to another Sunday where we, and we're so glad that you're with us today. We invite you to worship with us, to put away all the distractions that you may have and to focus in on God. He's worthy of our song, he's worthy of our praise. So we invite you to lift up a song with us. So let's pray. Father God, we just know that you're good. We know God that you're gracious and you're merciful. God, we know that you've given us new mercies even today. So, Father, we just focus our eyes on you. We lift our attention to you. And, God, we ask, God, that you lift our head. Encourage us. Lord, remind us that anything is possible with you. Remind us that we are champions because of you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Let's sing, there's no. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. You've already won. There's no weapon. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won. You've already won. Show me God. Show me one thing you can't do. Show me mountain he can't move. He's the God of the breakthrough, anything is possible. Show me one thing that's too hard. Show me what else he can't pop. He's the God of the breakthrough, anything is possible. Cause there is a key. Show me one thing. 
to praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out of it. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will so hard to see it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it you give what we don't deserve Take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall where you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. I am who you say.
facing today, Lord. Remind us that you've conquered it, that it's not ours, Father, but it's yours. And God, that you conquered that battle. So today we put our trust in you, we put our hope in you. Lord, we know that we have the victory, God. When the darkness falls, you won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. And I'm gonna see.
Let's lift up Jesus. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war, every war he wages, he will win. And I'm not backing down from any giant. Today, God, we just, we give it back to you, God. Lord, because we may be fighting and fighting, not knowing, God, that we've already won, that the battle is yours. So today we release and we give to you the fight. We give to you the battle, God. Knowing, God, Lord Jesus, that 
that you've already won, that, that you, we have victory over every circumstance. So, Father, just remind us today that you're with us. Remind us today, God, that you're fighting for us. Remind us today that you've already won. And there may be areas in our life where we may feel defeated. But God, today we speak victory in life over those areas. God, we trust you. Speak to us today. Encourage us, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Father. We just ask that you be in our midst. Lord, we bless you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hi, champions. Glad to be with you again. Uh, please let me know where you are watching from. And I trust that you are doing well and staying safe wherever you are. For those of you who are watching in North America, I trust that you are enjoying the beautiful summer weather that we have. But make sure that you take advantage of it and get out of your house. Uh, make sure, though, that you keep yourself uh, and others safe. Maintain uh, physical distance and wear a mask when you can't be physically distant. By the way, we are excited to tell you that we are relaunching our church and opening our building in Brampton next week, which is July 5th, Sunday. And that means we get to see each other in our building live. However, in phase one uh, of our relaunch, we will be limited, so we will continue our online celebration at the same time. So please watch for the announcements or ask your leader. And also for our other centers, they will have a different uh, relaunch date, so make sure that you check with your uh, satellite. Today is also a special day, and I'm very excited about this because in Canada, it is graduation time for the high school and university students. I want to take time today to recognize all of you. I, I, if you have just graduated or graduating this year, we want to honor you today. On behalf of our church, we congratulate you for your hard work and the sacrifice you made to finish well. I encourage you to continue pursuing excellence and doing your best in whatever you do. Your generation is the future leaders of our nation. Our world needs people like yourself to make an impact in every sector of our society. But remember to always put God first because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to the proud parents of the graduates, we also congratulate you for your investment in the next generation. So to all of you, we honor you and cheer you today. You are all champions, and we are proud of your achievements. Let's put that on the chat. You know, congratulations, graduates, go ahead. Take time to uh, honor them today. Just type it in the chat, congratulations, graduates, or put some uh, clap or hands up, whatever, okay? So uh, we honor you today. So now let us prepare our hearts as we listen to the Word of God uh, today. So get your Bibles, and we're going to uh, look at the Word of God today. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today, and we thank you for uh, this time that we can be together to hear your word and your message for us. We pray, God, that uh, our ears are open, our, our minds are open, and our hearts are open to receive from you today. Let your word come forth. Let it be rooted in our hearts, and Lord, that we can uh, be transformed in our lives, that we can demonstrate it every day of our life. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Friends, um, today I am starting a three-part series called The Champion Life, and we will talk about how we can live a life as overcomers in whatever situation we are in. Do you know that as children of God, we don't only have an abundant life, we also have a champion life. We will learn how to be a champion and live victoriously in spite of the difficulties we face. 
even in difficult circumstances like now. We are living in difficult times as we go through the coronavirus pandemic. But champions still overcome and make an impact. So I want you to join me for the next three weeks. Tell your friends, share the messages so we can help people have a champion life. Today, I want to talk to you about the spirit of a champion. And I want you to turn with me to a passage of Scripture in 1 Samuel verse eight, uh, chapter 18, verse 14. It says this, In everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. Now, this passage speaks about David, who was a champion. As a young boy, against all odds, he beat the giant Goliath. The whole army of Israel was pinned down by the Philistines because of this giant. But David, who was a shepherd boy, fearlessly challenged Goliath. Even though he wasn't trained in the army and didn't have the heavy armor, he faced the giant because his confidence was in the Lord who was with him. We know the end of that confrontation was he defeated the giant and the Israelites won the battle. David also had opposition from his own boss, Saul, who tried to even kill him. He managed to escape death from Saul, and eventually uh, he became the king of Israel. Now, what caused David to be successful was because the Lord was with him. You know, it wasn't his ability or uh, stature. Uh, it wasn't about his skills. It was the Lord. So another man who was a champion was Joseph, the son of Jacob. Now, as a young boy, he had a dream that he will rule and others would submit to him. But he was persecuted by his own family. Have you ever had a vision or a dream and people persecuted you for it? Well, Joseph was actually beaten and left for dead and eventually sold to Egypt as a slave. As an immigrant, he faced tremendous difficulties, even falsely accused, which brought him to jail and later betrayed by his inmate after he even helped him. Needless to say, he didn't have an easy life. Um, but in spite of that, Joseph became the second most powerful man in Egypt, which ruled the world then. Today, he would be like the vice president of the United States. But, friends, several times, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. In fact, you see here, uh, the Bible says this about him in Genesis 39, verse 23. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. See, no doubt we could call these men, David and Joseph, as champions. But what is a champion? You know, oftentimes we associate a champion as a winner of first prize in a competition. But it means more than that. According to the Webster's Dictionary, it also means a warrior, a fighter, an advocate or defender, one that does battle for another, uh, another's rights or, uh, or honor. Now, in the Bible, it means the mighty man. You know, that's a champion. See, our world needs champions. Without them, dreams and visions will not be fulfilled. Nations will not rise. New discoveries will not be found. Great exploits will not be accomplished. Great causes will not be won. Champions make things happen against all odds. But the greatest champion that ever lived is Jesus. You know, Time Magazine published an article in November 1999, and it says this, quote, the single most powerful figure, not merely in these two millenniums, but in all human history, has been Jesus of Nazareth. A serious argument can be made that no one else's life has proved remotely as powerful and enduring as that of Jesus. Wow, that's a powerful statement coming from Time magazine. Well, let's look at his life. He was born in a manger. He began preaching as a boy in the temple. The Bible says he grew in wisdom and stature. 
He became a carpenter and worked with his earthly father, Joseph. And at 30, he began his ministry under the power of the Holy Spirit with miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, he advanced the kingdom of God with 12 disciples in spite of great opposition. He was insulted, accused, mocked, imprisoned, and because of the message that he preached. And three years later, he was beaten, crucified, and was buried so that our sins will be forgiven. Now, after three days, he rose again from the dead and broke the power of sin and darkness. Now, his life touched the whole world. Today, he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he is coming again with great power and great glory. Now, here's what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Ephesians 2, verse 6 also says this, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Friends, those that believe in him are seated with him in the heavenly realms with authority. We are dealing from a position above and not below. And the good news is, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, He came into your life. He deposited the Holy Spirit inside of you to empower you and enable you to live a life of a champion. You have the power to overcome in every situation. But friend, you must be a son or a daughter of God to live a life of a champion. See, as a child of God, the true champion, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, is in you. He is in me. The Bible says this. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And in verse 13, we know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. Friends, because you are a son of God and the Lord lives in you, you have the capacity of a champion. You have the potential to be a champion at everything you do so you can rise above your situation no matter what it looks like. You don't have to settle to where you are today. And just like David and Joseph, you can be successful at everything you do because the Lord is with you. Be a champion in the marketplace at your work. Be a champion at home in your relationship. Be a champion in school, in your academics. But for us to be a champion, we must live like a champion. Even though we have the potential, we still need to live it out. We must develop a spirit of a champion. Now, what is the spirit of a champion? What drives a champion? First of all, true champions are made and shaped by the power of God. Champions develop the character needed to succeed in life. They develop the spirit of a, of a champion by having the right attitude. Do you have the right attitude? That's something we should be asking ourselves. See, here at Champion Life Center, our goal is to empower the lives of people to impact our world. We want our children and our youth, uh, the next generation, to develop the spirit of a champion. Now, early in life, we want to equip them and impress in their minds that they are champions, not losers. We desire that our young adults in university will be champions in the world to finish well and be the business and political leaders to make a difference in our nation, to be successful at what they do as they fulfill their God-given calling. See, friends, our goal is to help you be the best to make a difference in this world by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me share with you seven characteristics of a champion. I believe you, if you will cultivate this in your life with the help of the Holy Spirit, you too 
can be a champion at work, in school, or at home. You can be a champion in your business, in ministry, and in the community. So declare that with me. I am a champion. Go ahead. I am a champion. You can already declare that in your life. I am a champion. Now, here's some seven characteristics of a champion that I'd like to share with you. The first one is this. Champions have a positive outlook. See, champions always look for the good in every situation. They're not easily discouraged by what they see. They live by faith and not by sight. They have the mind of Christ. Here in Philippians 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. See, no matter what obstacles they encounter, they always continue to think positive. They understand that God is working out the situation. In Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. See, things may not all be good. You know, sometimes there's things that we go through that doesn't look good. But God works it out for good. And champions know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. They're not always looking for what will not work or what cannot be done because they know that with God, all things are possible. Amen. If you agree with me, just type amen, all right? Now, the second thing is this. Champions are visionaries. See, champions understand the importance of vision and focus. They're not easily distracted by other things and lose focus. They set goals to accomplish the vision. The athletes set goals to make it to the Olympics. Do you have a dream or vision from God? Do you have a God-given goal? Don't be distracted by the things of this world and wander aimlessly through life. You know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. See, Apostle Paul was focused on his desire to win the lost. His vision drove him to advance the gospel in whatever circumstance. Champions realize that if they don't know where they're going, that's exactly where they'll end up, nowhere. <laughs> Uh, champions consistently set long and short-term goals. You know, while they're meeting the short-term goal, they, they don't lose focus of the vision. Now, friends, this pandemic may have set you back a little bit, but don't lose the vision that God has given you. And also, don't allow the past to blur your vision for the future. Pursue the vision and be a champion. The third thing is this. Champions surround themselves with positive people. See, champions understand that being with the right people can develop them. In Proverbs 27, 17, it says this, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. See, champions look for people that sharpen them. They recognize that they cannot rise as eagles when they hang around with the wrong people. They guard their hearts and their minds so they are not influenced by negative attitudes because they know that bad company corrupts good character. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, you may be a good person and you have a good character, but if you keep hanging around others who don't, you get corrupted. And so before you, you like to go to church, maybe you went to the life groups, you had a support group, you read the Bible, you prayed, and you were serving the Lord and productive. And then you started hanging out with friends who don't do any of that. Instead of you being able to influence them, they corrupted you and you become like them. Instead of you growing in your walk with the Lord, you now have drifted away from God. See, that's not being a champion. That's being a loser. 
because you allowed bad company to corrupt you. Now, don't get me wrong. We can be with them, but don't get corrupted by them. In fact, God places us there in those situations so we can make a difference and impact the lives of others. You know, the opposite is also true. You hang out with achievers long enough, you will be an achiever too. You know, the Bible shows us that Elisha was an ordinary man. While all the other prophets watched on the sidelines and went about their life, Elijah knew where he was going to connect. He didn't want to leave Elijah, you know, the great prophet. He hung out long enough with Elijah that the spirit of Elijah was imparted on him. Eventually, he was twice as powerful as Elijah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So friends, begin today to look for people who demonstrate the qualities of a champion and let them mentor you. Now, another uh, characteristic is champions are disciplined and consistent. See, champions are committed and disciplined in training. They understand that success does not come overnight. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 25 says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Now, you know what training is. Friends, it's hard work. If you want to be successful at anything, it takes discipline. Whether you want to lose weight, learn to drive, or start a business, be promoted, you need to be consistent and disciplined. Losers want to be promoted and gain things and be successful, but they're not consistent or disciplined. They don't want to work hard for it. Positive outlook, goal setting, persistence, and discipline are vital. And part of discipline is to work hard to accomplish your goal. You know that Thomas Edison said, success is 98% perspiration and only 2% inspiration. Champions consistently work hard to achieve their goal. In Proverbs 14, verse 23, it says this, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. See, champions take consistent action, and they're willing to do the things that the losers are not. They will do things even when they don't feel like doing it because they understand the importance and they understand their priorities. They will still go to church even when they are tired working maybe six days because they know it is important for them in their spiritual life and for their family. They will still take time to read the Bible even when they get busy or take time to pray even though th their schedule is full. They will do more than what is expected of them. Friends, champions will get up earlier or leave earlier so that they will not be late for an appointment. See, consider the woman in Proverbs 31. In Proverbs 31, verse 15, it says, she gets up while it is still dark she provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. Now, that's a true champion. They are steadfast with their commitment. Uh, commitment. They're not here today and gone tomorrow. Their yes is yes and no, no. And when they commit, they're consistent until the duration. They don't drop out in the middle. You can count on them. They're reliable. Amen. So declare that with me today. I am a champion. You can speak that into your life now and begin to live it out in your life. I am a champion. And then another characteristic is champions have a deep passion. They're passionate about what they do. Your passion drives you to do what you need to do. Without passion, we don't accomplish anything. To a loser, training, discipline, serving, and work is their passion. Or sorry, is a burden to them. But to a champion, training, discipline, serving, and work is their passion. See, there's a difference between being a loser or being a champion. To one, it will be a burden. To the other, that's what drives them. That's their passion. Champions are enthusiastic about what they do. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24 says this, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, 
Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Friends, they have the joy of serving. They enjoy worshiping the Lord. They can't wait to get involved. Champions are doing what they love. So to them, it's not work at all. It's a joy. And here's another one. Champions strive for excellence. See, friends, champions always try to do the best with what they do. They don't do things haphazardly just to get by. In fact, it says in Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the grave where you are going, there is neither working nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom. And in Proverbs 22, verse 29, it says this, Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Friends, champions aim for small improvements every day in every way. They are open-minded and are always looking for better way to do things. Even though champions are always striving for more, they also realize that success is a journey. So they enjoy every moment and appreciate every step along the way. We have an excellent God, so we too must do things with excellence. And finally, another characteristic is champions are persistent. They are persistent. Champions don't quit. They're persistent until they succeed. The Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood in Luke chapter 8 was persistent until she received her healing. The two blind men in Matthew 20 persisted until they were healed. People tried to stop them. Now, Thomas Edison, uh, as I've shared a while ago, was a persistent, well, he was very persistent until he succeeded to invent the light bulb. He conducted 10,000 experiments before finally finding a filament that would burn in the electric light bulb. Champions know that if they persist long enough, eventually they will succeed. And that's the encouragement we have from Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Paul says, don't get tired of doing what is good. Don't get discouraged and give up. For we will reap a harvest of blessing at the appropriate time. Friends, champions have the willingness to go through the trials while the failures quit when it starts to hurt. When the going gets tough, the champions get going. They see problems as opportunities and possibilities. Champions don't look at losses as failures. Instead, they overcome and learn from their experience. A champion finds a lesson in every loss and finds ways to grow from it. When Thomas Edison was asked what it felt uh, to fail 10,000 times, he replied, I didn't fail. I learned 9,999 ways that wouldn't work. See, champions know that they haven't failed until they quit, so they persist until they succeed. Well, friends, these are characteristics that make the spirit of the champion. The question is, do you have a spirit of a champion? Now, everybody wants to succeed in life. But friends, when you develop these traits, you will be successful at what you do. Why? Because they are biblical principles. They come from the Word of God. How do you develop them? By training. The church is a training ground. You know, this is where we come in and we learn and we are discipled and, 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 and people walk with us and our characters develop. This is where you can develop the spirit of the champion. As you serve and use your giftings, you develop perseverance, commitment, and many other wonderful things. You develop the character of what it takes to be a champion in life. You grow and you learn to lead others. And that's the reason why we are called disciples and we are to make disciples because we have the spiritual disciplines that make us a champion. How we serve God is a reflection of who we are. 
When we serve God with excellence and commitment, then we are also, also excellent and committed in everything else we do. Why? Because that is who we are. It shows our maturity in Christ, how we have developed our Christ-like character. As a result, we'll be successful in everything we do. Now, Paul says this in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Friends, Paul is saying this. I don't rely anymore on what I can do. I rely completely on Jesus Christ who lives in me, who is the champion, who overcame the world. He is my victory. He is my hope. He is my refuge. He is my shelter. He is my uh, healer. He is my provider. Because of him, I can do all things. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Today, you can have the spirit of a champion. Like David and Joseph, you can be successful in everything you do because the Lord is with you. Let me encourage you to continue to walk with God and let Him lead you to a successful and meaningful life that you become a champion. Of course, we know that the most important thing in life is not to be just successful. The most important thing in life is surrendering your life to the one who will give you success. Without him, you can do nothing. But with him, all things are possible. So do you have the spirit of a champion? Then let me pray for you to receive Jesus in your life. Now that you can have the greatest champion that ever lived inside of you so that you yourself can live out a champion life. So will you pray with me today that you will receive him into your life? So if you've never done that before, I, let me just pray with you and I'd like to lead you in this simple prayer. So they, say this with me. Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. You died on the cross and rose from the dead that I may have life. Forgive me for all my sins and I will follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Friends, if you have prayed that prayer, please listen to our host who will give you some instructions. And I believe that when you prayed that prayer, you have a brand new start. No matter what your life has been before, today you have a brand new beginning. You can live a life of a champion because the champion lives in you. So now let me pray for all of you today. Let me pray that God will be with you and that you will be able to be an overcomer and, and overcome and all the obstacles in your life. Let me just pray for you. Just bow your heads with me today and let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that you have given us today. That, Lord, what it means to have the spirit of a champion. We thank you that you are the champion in our life. And because of you, because you are with us, we can be successful, that we can do all things because of you in our life. And so, Lord, today I pray for, for the families that are watching today. God, I pray that they will overcome, that they will know that there is a God who loves them, that they will know that Jesus is inside of them and the power of the Holy Spirit is upon them that they can go and be successful at whatever they do because you are with them. And so, Lord, I pray for each family right now. I pray your blessing to be upon them and that, God, they will be uh, overcomers and more than conquerors. And, God, that you are, are going to be with them to lead them and guide them to live a champion life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Friends, we look forward to seeing you again next week and as we continue our series, The Champion Life. God bless. Thanks for being a part of today's online celebration. If you've committed your life to Christ, we have a special gift for you. You can leave us a note by going online to championlife.ca and clicking contact. 
Or if you need prayer, you can click I need prayer and somebody will reach out to you by phone. Or you can call us on our toll free prayer line at 1-844-728-9526. That's 1-844-728-9526. And don't forget, you are all invited to join us in our Connect Lounge directly after this. There's a link in the description up above, and we really hope to see you there. And as always, there are many ways for you to give your online tithes and offerings right now. You can text to give, give through our website, use our CLC app, or e-transfer. Just make sure to select the location that you are giving to. Lastly, follow us on all of our social media pages. We love to stay updated and engaged with you, and this is the best way for you to stay updated and engaged with us. Well, that is it for today. Thank you again for joining with us. Congratulations to all of our graduates. We are so proud of you, and we can't wait to see you all again next Sunday.